afternoon, brothers and sisters. Our lesson for this afternoon is called Adventism under the curse of the seven times or the 2520 principle. I would like to begin with this lesson with the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation chapter 11 in verses 1, 2, and 3. And the Bible says, And there was given me a reed like unto a rod. And the angel stood saying, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar, and them that worship therein. Verse 2, But the court which is without the temple, leave out and measure it not. For it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they trample or tread underfoot forty and two months. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days clothed with sack in sackcloth. So here the Bible tells us that the temple should be measured, but the outer court is given unto the Gentiles, plural, not singular, but plural Gentiles. And it, were, it, it was given them 40 and two months to tread God's people underfoot. Now that word underfoot, tread underfoot, is a key word, keep that in mind. But notice that in, in, in the sanctuary uh, figure, you, you have here, the sanctuary here, the temple was, was to be measured but the outer court is given unto the Gentiles, plural. And there are two furnitures in the outer court. You have the altar of burnt sacrifice and the laver. Just keep that in mind. It's very important for us to understand these key words. The Gentiles, plural, and tread underfoot for 42 months. So we see that 42 months is equal to 12, 1260 years, according to verse, thir um, verse 3. But we know that it was the papacy that ruled for 12, 12, 60 years, treading God's people underfoot. But that's just one power. But remember, the, it was given unto the Gentiles. The outer court was given unto the Gentiles. So here we see that the papacy was given 42 months to tread God's people underfoot. If we go to Daniel chapter 8, Daniel chapter 8, and I'm just lay laying a foundation for this lesson to show that Adventism is under the curse of the seven times or the 2520 in principle, not in, not in time setting or timeline, but in principle. Daniel chapter 8 in verse 13 and 14. And the Bible says, Then I heard one saint speak, speaking in another saint, said unto that certain saint, which spake, how long shall be the vision concerning the daily in the transgression of desolation to give both the sanctuary and the host to be what? Trodden underfoot. And verse 14 says, and the answer, of course, it says, and he said unto me, unto 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. So there was a question asking, how long shall be the vision, the whole entire vision, and it says, concerning the daily, that's number one, and we know that the daily is, is, is paganism, and the transgression of desolation is the papacy. Now, if you watch one of my videos called the 2520, um, part one and part two, you'll have a better understanding concerning the daily and the transgression of desolation. So here we see that two powers are trotting God's people underfoot. And we see that in Revelation chapter 11, the same thing, the same language was, was given, that the outer court was given unto the Gentiles, plural, and they shall tread God's people underfoot for 42 months. We saw that it was the papacy. But Daniel chapter 8, verse 13 and 14, shows us that the transgression of desolation is the papacy. But what happened to the, to, to the daily? The daily also does a work of trotting God's people underfoot. Now, we're going to go to Daniel chapter 9. Uh, Daniel chapter 9, 
And we know that verse 14 in Daniel 8, the answer was given unto 2300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. All right, so we have two powers here that treads God's people underfoot for 2300 days. And we know that's why, the, uh, the reason why the deity is the paganism, because the 2300 days begins with pagan, with a pagan power, which is Media Persia, the Persians and the Medes in 457 BC. So we see that it begins with paganism, it, it begins with, with Media Persia. But there's a kingdom that's missing in that 2300 days. Which kingdom was that? Which kingdom was before Media Persia, in, which is Babylon, according to the image of Daniel chapter 2, and also the, the, the image of Daniel chapter 7, we see that the kingdom that came before Media Persia is Babylon is Babylon. So in the 2300 days, you have a kingdom that also tread God's people on the foot, but that kingdom was not in the vision of the 2300 days. So we see that 2300 days, the kingdom that was missing is Babylon. And we're talking about the power that treads God's people on the foot. Daniel 9 and verse 26. And the Bible says, And after three score, in two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself, and the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. And this power is pagan Rome. Pagan Rome in 70 AD destroy the city, Jerusalem. They destroy it. So that prophecy was fulfilled in 70 AD. And it goes on to say, And the end thereof shall be with a flood. And unto the end of the war, desolations, plural, are determined. So we see that there, there are more than one desolating powers or de desolators. It says desolations are determined at the end of the war. So here we see that it begins with, with pagan Rome destroying the city. And the end thereof shall be like a flood. Now, what does the flood represent? And we know the flood represents multitudes, tongues, nations, and kingdoms, according to Revelation chapter 17 and verse 15. But specifically, uh, what does the flood represent in Bible prophecy? If we go to Revelation chapter 12, Revelation chapter 12 and verse 14 and 15, and the Bible says, And to the woman was given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nourished, for a time, times, and a half a time from the face of the serpent. Now, three and a half years in prophecy, when you break it down, it gives you exactly 1260 years. Now, which power ruled for 1260 years during that time? It's the papacy, the papal church. And it goes on to say, verse 15, And the serpent casts of his mouth water as a, what? Flood. That's the power of the papacy, persecuting God's people during that time. The church, the woman with the, with the two wings. And it says, after the woman, and he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. So now let's go back to Daniel 9 to, to have a better understanding. Back to Daniel 9 in verse 26. And the Bible says again, and after three scores in two weeks shall the Messiah be cut off. And not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come, that shall come, shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. That's pagan Rome. Okay, it begins with pagan Rome. And then it says, in the end thereof shall be with a flood. So at the end of this desolation, the, the trotting down upon God's people, shall be with a flood. And we just saw that the flood represents the papacy. So now we have paganism tramping God's people on the foot, starting with Babylon all the way to pagan Rome. And pagan Rome perfected um, paganism. That's why it's called pagan Rome. You never heard pagan Babylon. You never heard pagan Media Persia. You, you never heard pagan Greece, but pagan Rome, because Rome is the only power that perfected paganism. It reached all the way to its height of paganism, of self-exaltation. 
So paganism tread God's people underfoot, and the papacy, the end of the desolation or the end of the of the war, is 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 uh, with a flood. And that's the papacy. Now again, let's go back to Revelation chapter 11. Revelation chapter 11 and verses 1 two, and 2. And the Bible says, And there was given me a reed like unto a rod. And the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God, and the altar in them that worship therein. Verse 2. But the court which is without the temple, the court in the outer court, which is outside of the temple, the Bible says, is without the temple, leave, leave out, and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles, plural. And the Gentiles, plural, um, consists paganism and papalism. Those are the two Gentiles' power or two desolating powers. And the holy city shall they tread underfoot, that's a key word, foot, treading down underfoot, 40 and 2 months. So we know that the papacy was given 40 and 2 months. But remember, we have another Gentile, which is paganism. And how long was it given to tread God's people underfoot as well? We need to listen to, verse, to, to the verses carefully, because it was given to the Gentiles 42 months. Now, which furniture are in the outer court? And we have the altar of sacrifice and the laver. Those are the only two furnitures we found in the outer court, but they were given to the Gentiles. All right? They were given to the Gentiles. Now, what are they made of? The altar of burnt sacrifice and the laver, what type of a material they were made of? If we go to Ezekiel, um, I'm sorry, not Ezekiel, rather Exodus chapter 27. Exodus 27 and verse 6, the Bible says, And thou shalt make staves for the altar, staves of shit and wood, and overlay them with what? Brass. So the altar of sacrifice was to be laid with brass. All right? brass. If we go to Exodus chapter 30, concerning the labor now, Exodus 30 and verse 18, the Bible says, Thou shalt also make a labor of brass, and his foot also of brass, to wash withal, and thou shalt put it between the tabernacle of the congregation and the altar, and thou shalt put water therein. So both of those furnitures were made of brass. That's a very important key word. Keep that in mind. So here we see that in the sanctuary, we see the outer court here. We see the altar of sacrifice and the laver. And both of these furnitures were made of brass. Okay. The laver had water therein. Okay. Or flood, if you please. Now let's go to Ezekiel to see the symbolism behind the brass. Ezekiel chapter 1 and verse 17. Ezekiel 1 chapter, seven, um, chapter 1 and verse 17. The Bible says, And their feet were straight feet, and the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf foot, and they sparkled like the color of burnished brass. Okay, so we see brass is connected with feet. All right, let's go to Daniel chapter 10 and verse 6. Daniel 10 and verse 6, the Bible says, His body was also was like the burial, and his face as the appearance of lightning, and his eyes as lamps of fire, and his arms and his feet light in color to polish brass. And the voice of his word was like the voice of a multitude. So here again, the feet is connected us again with the brass. All right? Let's go to Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 15. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 15. And the Bible says, And his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burn in, in a furnace, and his voice 
as the sound of many waters. So here, another witness, we have three witnesses so far, that the feet is connected with brass. The brass is connected with the feet. Our last witness, the fourth witness, Revelation chapter 12, I'm sorry, Revelation chapter 2 in verse 18. Revelation chapter 2 in verse 18, the Bible says, and Christ says here, and unto the angel of the church in, Th in Tara Tara, write these things, said the Son of God, who hath the eyes, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. So here again, brethren, that the feet, the foot is connected with brass. So here, brother, brother and sisters, that the, the, the outer court, which is given to the Gentiles, and the Gentiles will tread God's people under foot. And the foot is connected with brass because the altar and the laver are made, with, are made of brass. And the brass is connected with the feet. And the Gentiles, they tread God's people under foot for 42 months. The papacy was given 42 months to tread God's people under foot, the brass. And the Gentiles was also given 42 months to tread God's people under foot with brass. Now let's go to Exodus. We're going to examine those furnitures um, very closely. Exodus chapter 30 and verses 1 and 2. The Bible says in verse 1, And he made the altar of burnt offering of shifting wood. Five cubits was the length thereof, and five cubits the breadth thereof. It was four score, I mean four square, and three cubits the height thereof. Verse 2, And he made the horns thereof on the four corners of it. So you have a square. Now, how many corners do you have? You have four corners, and therefore, if... If, 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 if horns were, were, were supposed to place on each corner, how many horns you have? You have four horns because you have four corners. So in the altar of sacrifice, you have four horns. All right? And the horn in Bible prophecy represents powers. Okay? In Bible prophecy, horns represents powers. Verse 2, let me read verse 2 again. It says, And he made the horns thereof on the four corners of it, the horns thereof, were of the same and he overlay it with brass so those four horns or four powers were made of brass they were laid over with brass and we see that brass is connected with the feet and the feet that the gentiles use is to trample god's people on the foot for 42 months each of the gentiles were given 42 months Let's go to Zechariah, the book of Zechariah concerning those horns. What are the purpose of the horns? Zechariah chapter 1 and verse 18 and 19. The book of Zechariah chapter 1 and verses 18 and 19. And the Bible says, Then lifted up my eyes and saw and behold four horns. And I said unto the angel that talk with me, What be these? And he answered me, These are the horns which have scattered Judah and Israel and Jerusalem. So the four horns, brothers and sisters, their purposes was to scatter Judah, Israel, Jerusalem, God's people, to scatter them. All right, so why, they were, so why are they scattered? That's the question. But the answer will be given through this lesson as we go as we move on now what are those powers that scatter Israel and Judah now if you go to to second Kings because according to the chart behind me you see that there are four powers that scatter Israel and Judah we have Babylon media Persia Greece and pagan Rome all right so now we're going to go to to second kings old testament second kings we're going to do a lot of reading 
in chapter 22. If you read the, the whole story, I'm not going to read the whole, the whole um, chapter, but if you read the whole, the whole chapter, it shows you that there's a reformation. But why there's, there was a reformation in the reign of Josiah, King Josiah? Let me read verse 1. And the Bible says, 2 Kings chapter 22, Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign. And he reigned 30 and one years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Jedida, the daughter of Adiah of Boshkath. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord and walk in all the ways of David, which his father and turn not aside to the right hand or to the left. Verse 3, And it came to pass in the eighteenth year of King Josiah that the king sent Shaphan, the son of Az Azaliah, the son of Meshulam, the scribe, to the house of the Lord, saying, Go, to the, to, go up to Halkiah, the high priest, that he may sum the silver which is brought into the house of the Lord, which the keepers of the door have gathered of the people. Now I'm going to jump uh, to verse, verse 8. And the Bible says in verse 8, In Halakiah the, the high priest said to Shaphan the scribe, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. And Halakiah gave the book to Shaphan and he read it. And Shaphan the scribe came to the king and brought the king word again and said, Thy servants have gathered the money that was found in the house and have delivered it into the hand of them that do the work that have, that have the oversight of the house of the Lord. And Shaphan the scribe showed the king, saying, Halakiah the priest hath delivered me a book. And Shaphan read, read it before the king and it came to pass when the king had heard the words of the book of the law that he rent his clothes now there's something special in this book of the law if you do a, a, a study about this book of the law is the book of moses the curse of moses which you will find in leviticus 26 in verse 13 says Verse 12 says, rather, And the king commanded Hakiah the priest, and Ahikim, the son of Shaphan, and Akbar, the son of Machiah, and Shaphan the scribe, and Asahiah, the servant of the king, saying, Go ye inquire of the Lord for me and for the people, for all Judah, concerning the words of this book that is found for great is the wrath of the Lord that is kindled against us because our fathers have not hearkened unto the words of this book to do according unto all that which is written concerning us. So there's something that King Josiah recognized that matter of fact, they were under the bondage of Babylon. All right. And, and, and Manasseh was the grandfather of King Josiah. Josiah is, is, is the grandson of Man Manasseh. And Manasseh was the king that was taken into captivity in the rulership of Babylon. And that's when Judah was scattered as a people in 677 BC. So here we see that King Josiah recognized that they are under the curse of the book of the law, the curse of Moses. And they were under the rulership of Babylon. So they recognized, he recognized that they were under the curse. So here the Bible shows us that the curse, Babylon, was trampling God's people underfoot. And King Josiah recognized that they were under the curse of the seven times, according to Leviticus 26. So that's a, that's a, that's a witness to, tells a, to tell us that under the, the rulership of Babylon, Israel, Judah, was scattered. They were scattered. Now, which power that comes after Babylon, which is Media Persia? If we go to Daniel chapter 9, Media Persia came after Babylon. 
we're going to see if, if, if God's people were under, still under the curse under Media Persia. Daniel 9 and verse 12. Uh, verse 1, rather. Verse 1. Daniel 9, verse 1. The Bible says, In the first year of Darius, the son of Ahasuerus, of the seed of the Medes, which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans. In the first year of his reign, I saw, I mean, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of the years whereof the word of the Lord came to J Jeremiah the prophet, that he would accomplish seventy years in the desolations of Jerusalem. And I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplication with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And I pray unto the Lord my God and made my confessions and said, O Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant of mercy to them that love him and do and to them that keep his commandments and have sinned and have committed iniquity and have done wickedly and have rebelled even by departing from the precepts and from thy judgments. Neither have we hearkened unto thy servants, the prophets, which spake in thy name to our kings, our princes, and our fathers, to all the people of the land. O Lord, righteousness belong, belongeth unto thee, but unto us confusion, confusion of faces as at this day to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and unto all Israel that are near and that are f far off through all the countries wherewith, whether, whether thou hast driven them, because they of their trespass, that they have trespassed against thee. O Lord, to us belongeth confusion of face to our king, to our princes, and to our fathers, because we have sinned against thee. Now there's something that Daniel recognized. And he is confessing his sins and the sins of his people before God. We're going to continue. Verse 9. To the Lord our God belongeth mercy and forgiveness, though we have rebelled against him. Neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in his laws, which he set before us by his servants, the, prophet, the prophets. Verse 11. Yeah. All Israel have transgressed thy law, even by departing, and they might that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore, the what the curse is poured upon us, and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servants of the servant of God, because we have sinned against him. So here, Daniel was under the the rulership of the Med the Medes and the Persians, not Babylon. When he was praying this prayer, he, Babylon did not exist anymore. Babylon was destroyed by, by, by the media and Persians. So Daniel recognized that they are still under the curse of paganism. Josiah recognized it was Babylon. Now Daniel recognized that it's Babylon, also media Persia. Okay, media Persia. So here we see that media Persia under the rulership of Medo Persia, they were treading God's people underfoot, and God's people were under the curse of the book of the law or the book of Moses. If you go, if you continue to read all the way to uh, verse twenty, you will see that they broke the covenant of God, and the curse was pronounced upon them. And it begins with Babylon, pagan, and also it goes on to it, it moves all, uh, from Babylon to Medo Persia. Now. We're going to move on. Let's go to Leviticus. Leviticus. Chapter 26. Leviticus 26. To see this curse of Moses. If you read Leviticus 26, we're going to begin with verse 14. It begins with the blessings. From verse 1 
all the way to verse 13, blessings, if they keep the, co uh, the covenant of the Lord. But verse 14 and onward are the curses. And the Bible tells us in Ecclesiastes, there's nothing new under the sun. The same principles that apply to ancient Israel applies to us today, to Adventism. If we break God's covenant, then the curse will pronounce upon us. And I'm not talking about timeline, because after 1844, there's no more timeline or time setting. But we're dealing with principles. So let's go to Leviticus 26, and we're going to begin with verse 14. And the Bible says, But if ye will not hearken unto me, and will not do all these commandments, and if ye shall despise my statutes, and if your soul ab abhor my judgment, my judgment, judgments, that so that ye will not do all my commandments, but that ye break my covenant, I also will do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror, consumption, and the burning ague, and that's disease, and we see that in Adventism today. And, and the Bible says, burning ague that shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart, and ye shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemies shall eat it. And I will set my face against you, and ye shall be slain before your enemies, that they that hate you shall reign over you, and ye shall flee when none pursue, pursueth you. So the enemy of God will rule over them. And that includes Babylon and Media Persia. So in our day, we have the Gentiles ruling over Adventism. We have the government. government. Well, let me not go there. Let me not go there. But God's enemies will rule over them. And they will not be the head anymore, but they will be the tail. And this is what's happening in Adventism today. Therefore, we are under the curse of Moses in principle. Because we forsake the Lord. Verse 18 says, And if you will not yet for all this hearken unto me, then will I punish you seven times more for your sins. And I will break the pride of your power and will make your heaven as iron and your earth as brass. And your strength shall be spent in vain, for your land shall not yield her increase, neither shall the trees of the land yield their, increase, their fruits. And if, ye will, and if ye walk contrary unto me, and will not hearken unto me, I will bring seven times more plagues upon you according to your sins. I will also send wild beasts among you, which shall rob you of your children, and destroy your cattle, and make you few in numbers, and your high ways shall be desolate. Now this is very important, and we see this taking place in Adventism. The beast, it says, I will send wild beasts among you, which shall rob you of your children. Now, what does a beast represent in Bible prophecy? A beast represents nations, power, kingdoms, the Gentiles. And they shall rob us of our children. And we see that taking place today in Adventism. The nations, the world, the, 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 the heathens, they are robbing God's people, the children specifically, um, you know, through television, through the internet, through of the Egyptians. Why is that? It's because we refuse, we turn away, we shun the health message principles. And we want to do our own thing. We want to eat our own thing. We're bringing flesh meat in the church, in the house of God. And we expect God to heal us. We expect God to, 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 to bless the church. We expect God to bless us. Oh no, it is an abomination when we openly and, 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 and willingly sin against God. Turn away from the truth. God says our prayers will be an abomination unto him. He will not accept those kind of prayers. If we are willing to put away sin, put away worldly diets, worldly things away from our lives, from the home, because the home is the heart of society. The church is formed with many homes. If the home is not right, 
it will not be blessed. Therefore, the church will not be blessed because we will bring everything that we practice from home to the church. There's no secret things before God. Verse 26. And when I have broken the staff of your bread, ten women shall bake your bread in one oven. And they shall deliver you your bread again by weight. And ye shall eat and not be satisfied. And we see that a lot in the church again, in Adventism. Many of us are not satisfied. God gave us things we're not satisfied. The economic crisis is affecting everybody, especially the church. And now the church is, is, is trying to compromise in order to gain money. Now we're hearing, you know, uh, uh, two types of service in the church. Um, you know, uh, many other things um, they're trying to do. And I've seen in churches, I've, I've seen in Seventh-day Adventist churches where they, they, they're trying to sell things in the church. Sell DVDs, sell CDs in the church on Sabbath. And we expect God to bless us. Because we're living in a tough time, economic crisis. And God is testing His people. Verse 28 says, verse 27 rather, And if you will not walk for all this, hearken unto me. If you will not for all this, hearken unto me, but walk contrary unto me, then I will walk contrary unto you also in fury. And I, even I, will chastise you seven times for your sins. And ye shall eat the flesh of your sons, and the flesh of your daughters ye shall eat. Then, times are tough. In ancient Israel, they were literally eating their children because the enemy besieged the city. Nobody can come out, nobody can come in. No food can come in, no food can come out. And we have many of God's people trying to live in the cities and they don't want to live in the country. They have huge houses, I would say looking like mansions, and they refuse to sell their homes to buy humble homes in the country to raise their children and cultivate and prepare themselves for the crisis that's coming. But no, the bulk country living, they toss that aside. They toss that aside. So during the crisis, no man will be able to buy or sell unless you receive the mark of the beast. And that's how they will eat, spiritually will eat their children. Their parents will eat their children, which mean to us that they will betray their children in order to buy or sell. They will receive the mark of the beast and betray one another in order to receive the mark of the beast to be able to buy or sell. This is what the Bible is telling us. Ancient Israel, it was literal, but in our day, it is spiritual, symbolic. Verse 30, it says, in verse 30, and I will destroy your high places and cut down your images and cast your carcasses upon the carcasses of your idols. And my soul shall abhor you. And we have many idols in the church. And it's not talking about literal, physical statues of idols. It's talking about idols from the heart. And the Bible tells us that there are seven abominations in the heart. Seven idols that we need to remove from the heart through the grace of Christ. Verse 31 says, And I will make your cities waste and bring your sanctuaries unto desolation, and I will not smell the Savior of your sweet orders. That's prayer, worship. God will not accept those kind of false worship. That's why the church is not blessed. That's why people have no peace in their souls, in their life, because the, the shepherds, the false shepherds, are not allowing God's people to, 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 to worship uh, according to the Bible. And not just the, root, the, the leaders, but also the members. The members are so gullible that anyone that says, go left, they go left. Go right, they go right. But when a servant of God is trying to show them the way, they, they, they call them a shepherd rod. They call them an offshoot or some other name. But it doesn't matter. The truth is still the truth. We need to follow the truth in order to receive blessings from God. Because we are under the curse of the book of Moses in principle. 
verse 32. It says, And I will bring the land into desolation, and your enemies which dwell therein shall be as astonished at, at it. Verse 33, our last text. Verse 33, it says, And I will scatter you among the heathen. That's a key word. Scatter you. Remember the four horns. They were to scatter Israel, Judah, and Jerusalem. So, so the four horns represents the heathens, the Gentiles. That will scatter God's people. And we see in the book of the law of Moses, the curse of Moses, that the curse is to scatter God's people among the heathens, among the nations, among the beasts, the kingdoms. It goes on to say, And I will scatter you among the heathen, and will draw out a sword after you, and your land shall be desolate, and your cities waste. I will stop there. You can continue yourself in your, in, your, in your spare time, but here I will stop. So here we see that those four horns, they were to scatter God's people abroad among the heathens, the Gentiles, the kingdoms, the beasts. And we see that in the curse of Moses, the seven-time curse, they were to scatter. All right? They were to scatter. We know the seven times, if you use the... Um, day to a year principle it will give you exactly 25 20 years okay and half of 25 20 half of that is 1260 and we know 1260 was given to the papacy to try god's people underfoot but we are missing the other gentile which shall trample god's people underfoot which is another 1260 and that 1260 was given to the gentiles but we will find that out as we move on. Now Moses, before I go to Moses, we saw that King Josiah, he recognized that they were under the curse of the book of the law and they were under the rulership of Babylon. So Babylon did a scattering work. And then we go to Daniel 9, we see that Daniel recognized that they were under the curse again. And they were under the rulership of me, the, the media Persians, which did a scattering work as well, a trotting down upon God's people. So now we're going we're gonna to go to Moses, a prophecy from Moses. If we go to Deuteronomy 28, Deuteronomy 28, it's a long chapter, but I'm not going to read it for the sake of time. But please... I beg you, please read the whole chapter. Please. It's, 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 it's a reflection of Leviticus 26. It's a reflection of Leviticus 26. It's a repeat. It begins with the blessings and it ends with curses. So we will see as we read it. I'm going to begin with... with verse 15 verse 15 i'm not going to read the whole the whole chapter but i'm going to jump to different verses and that's in that same chapter in verse 15 uh, deuteronomy 28 verse 15 and the bible says but it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the lord thy god to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which i command thee this day that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Verse 16. Cursed shalt thou be in the city, and cursed be sh shalt thou be in the field. Cursed shalt thou be, shalt thou basket in thy store. Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy land, the increase of thy kind, and thy kin, and the flocks of thy sheep. Curse shall be, shall thou be when thou comest in, and curse shall thou be when thou goest out. And we see a lot of curses here. We see economic curses that applied to ancient Israel. And, and the wealth of ancient Israel at that time were, 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 were the, the, the crops, the trees, the fruit trees, the, 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 the vegetables, the, the sheep, the cattle, and so forth. But in our day, 
it is the money, the finances. And we see curses coming upon God's people in corporately and also individually. Those who are not faithful to God in, in tithing offering, and there are other offerings that we are not faithful in. Okay? So 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 many, many of, of, of God's people who profess to who profess to follow God are, 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 are not prospering. And when I say not prospering, I'm not talking about to be rich like the prospering ministry out there, but their pockets are full of 